Hello. Welcome to our series of videos on civic engagement in Kentucky. We are very glad that we're able to be here today with Treasurer Allison Ball, Kentucky State Treasurer. What an honor it is for Treasurer Ball to be here with us. We also have our State 4-H President and our State 4-H Vice President, and they'll introduce themselves before we get ready with the interview. We are glad that you have been able to join us, and we hope that you will get as much out of this as we do. Civic engagement is so important to the youth of Kentucky, and we are so pleased that we have state elected officials who will partner to make sure to pass that along, the importance of civic education. We hope that you enjoy the interview. Hello, I'm Madison Wilmoth, the Kentucky 4-H President. And I'm Emma Browning, the Kentucky 4-H Vice President. And we're super excited to be joined by Treasurer Ball. So if you could please tell us a little bit about yourself. Are you originally from Kentucky? Sure, I'd be happy to. Well, I am ninth generation from Floyd County. My family has been in the mountains of eastern Kentucky since the 1790s, so deeply rooted in Kentucky. I love the Commonwealth. Uh, a little bit more about me. I'm an attorney by background. I went to the University of Kentucky College of Law, which is now the Rosenberg College of Law. Mm -hmm. And uh, there's a few neat historical aspects about me. I was the first constitutional officer to give birth while serving in office. And I always tell people, not inside the office, of course, but, but while <laughs> While serving in office and I'm the first one to do it twice because I just had a little a little girl three months ago so I have a three-year-old a three-month-old and when I got elected I was the youngest woman in the country to serve as a statewide officer so uh, I love to see women involved I love to see young men involved too of course but uh, it's great to be with the two of you because I really believe in in women being involved great thank you so could you um, tell us a little bit about the main purposes of the office of the treasurer in Kentucky and kind of what's your role in that sure well as you just heard I'm the Kentucky State Treasurer and everyone knows if you're a treasurer you have something to do with money and that's totally correct <laughs> I always describe my job as a watchdog of taxpayer dollars that's the core function of what I do so all the money in Kentucky comes in and out of my office and I keep the books uh, and I manage a lot of our financial responsibilities I manage our banking responsibilities our taxes I'm the point person for the IRS. Uh, I do a lot with our investments in the Commonwealth of Kentucky and our, our debt management, our money management. Uh, pretty much if it has to do with money, then I'm involved in it on some level. And I also get to do some neat other things. I have uh, a part of my office called Unclaimed Property and it's basically the statewide lost and found. So it's a, it's a really fun thing to do because I get to make people happy. Not always in government are you making people happy, but I get people's property returned to them. So it's a great thing to do. Uh, and a few other things in the office, another aspect I've really uh, pushed and I was the first one to do it in a really aggressive way is financial literacy. You have supported increased financial literacy education yes. for um, Kentucky students. Um, could you please explain what those recommendations were and how they'll benefit students in the future? Absolutely. So uh, prior to being treasurer, I practiced bankruptcy law. And doing that, you really get to see that people have uh, all sorts of levels of training on, on money. Uh, a lot of times it's nothing. You know, they just kind of pick it up as they go, and that's a really dangerous way to learn about how to manage your finances. So, uh, you know, practicing law, I really began to care about teaching people how do you manage your money well? How do you make good decisions? And then when I became treasurer, I started to speak on it a little bit, usually to groups like you, like 4-H, or, uh, you know, high school sometimes would have me come in, and I began to see this is something we really need to address the whole state now not just one-on-one -on -one conversations here and there or group conversations this needs to be a, an effort for the whole state so a few years ago I pushed to make it a high school requirement that you have to have some training on this before you're through with school and that is now the law of the land it passed uh, that year so I was really proud of, of that being accomplished because not everybody understood the importance of that and it really took some effort so I think now people get it a lot more than they did uh, so it's now the law the incoming freshman class so so not you all the incoming high school freshmen they're the first class that's going to have to meet this requirement. So there's standards that have been uh, promulgated. Uh, so we now know there's certain things you've got to learn before you graduate from school. And by the time those kids are seniors, they'll have learned those things. So uh, I was the one to push for that high school requirement. And I then launched the Kentucky Financial Empowerment Commission, which is attached to the Treasury. And it makes sure that resources are available, trainings available to schools and other groups, like young adults, like you all. You fit that now, you young adults, uh, that they have resources to learn financial literacy. And I also have a free resource on my website that has a database and all kinds of uh, resources depending on what your point in life is uh, things that are targeted for you so that you can make good decisions and, and hopefully have some fun learning about money 
Thank you. Um, the Treasure Offices has a public website. Yes. Um, are there any specific online tools that you would like to tell us about or highlight? Mm -hmm. uh, so the Treasury website, which is treasury.ky.gov, it has a database of financial literacy resources, all kinds of stuff. Uh, almost all of it's free. So things for your age group, things for, for students younger than you, uh, people with disabilities. Uh, one thing that I launched in my office is a savings and investment program with people for people with disabilities. It's a great program called Stable Kentucky, so there's more about that on that site. Um, aging Kentuckians, people who have been in the military, either active or retired. Uh, if you work in the public sector, like as a state worker, there's resources for you too. So it's categorized into all sorts of levels and it's uh, just whatever your needs are at that point in life. So you just want to get better about investing. You know, Maybe you're starting to think about that or you want to make a budget. Uh, you want to figure out how to coupon better. There's all sorts of things on the database. The Kentucky Financial Empowerment Commission also has a website, so Kentucky Financial Empowerment. And uh, there's resources and opportunities there as well. So you've got two financial literacy opportunities connected to my office. And then of course, if you want to check out Unclaimed Property, see if you have some statewide lost and found, it's called missingmoney.com. That's a national database. You can go to my website and be linked to it. I tell people just go to missingmoney.com because you may have lost something in Florida and you don't know about it. So uh, you can go to the national database and see that. But yeah, there's all sorts of resources and you can check that out and I think it helps people out. That's amazing that there are so many resources. Um, so what are some of the positions in your office and kind of what are their duties? Sure. So uh, mine is very much a working office. It's very much a nuts and bolts office. So a lot of people have very technical jobs. Uh, some of them are doing uh, balancing the books. You know, they're doing that kind of level, uh, dealing with the finances. We actually have people that work at deposit rooms. So it's kind of like a bank. We have people that actually bring cash sometimes into the office. We've got tight security in the office to make sure everybody's safe and everything in there is safe. Uh, so we've got people that deal with those things like that. And then, of course, Unclaimed Property has its own area. And it's basically a call center uh, over there. So you know, they're always answering the phones and trying to help people get their money back. And there's a vault in the office. So we have a man who's in charge of the vault. Uh, you know, it's very secure, cameras, everything, making sure uh, items that people have lost stay in there until they come to claim them. And of course, we have the, the executive staff who are the ones uh, that are appointed by me. So we've got people that are there all the time, whoever the treasurer is. And some people are just there with me because they share my vision and what I'm doing. So I have a, an assistant treasurer who also is my chief of staff, and uh, her name is Leslie Bilby. So uh, I've got a lot of great women who serve in the office, and she's one of them. I have a communications director who makes sure the word gets out about what we're doing, um, you know, whether it's financial literacy or income property or sometimes it's about fraud. We have to do fraud alerts because we have to keep an eye on fraud attempts in Kentucky. Um, so we're pretty pretty busy. A lot of people wear multiple hats. Um, you know, unclaimed property director, director of disbursements and accounting, a, a lot of different different spots. And of course I have a general counsel. I actually have four attorneys in my office that one of them is general counsel who does just that and then some of them do other things as well because uh, we do a lot of legal um, things you know a lot of a lot of legal uh, stuff that we have to keep an eye on I'm in court quite often <laughs> and then we have to make decisions that have legal aspects to them so I found that it's really good to have someone who has a JD whether they're actually practicing in the legal field or they're doing something else if you've got that training it makes a big difference so are there any intern um, positions in your office and yes. what's the application process? Yes, yeah, so great question. So yes, we do. Uh, we usually don't have more than one at a time because uh, it's a small shop and we also need people that are uh, willing to do the kind of work that we need them to do. Uh, it's depending upon your, your age and your involvement in what you're doing. We sometimes pay. So like if you're a college student and you're, you're working as an intern, you're probably going to get paid because we're going to have you do some more uh, higher level work. If you're a high school student, we've had them occasionally, not very often. Uh, sometimes we'll have a high school student and a college student because the high school student usually is just there to observe. Um, and then we'll have them do, you know, easy work like bringing documents around, stuff like that. Some high school students are ready for some more serious work. We had one just recently who was very sharp and had done a lot of work on coding. So we actually pulled him in on some of our financial literacy website work. And uh, so he was ready to go. So it just depends on, on you know what your skill level is, what you're ready to do. Uh, I think it's a good place to intern because you get to work with some interesting people. Depending upon the time of year, we might take you over to the General Assembly because uh, I always have bills that I'm pushing, things that improve financial literacy or just improve the financial 
transactions of the office. So if you're working with me during that season, you get to go over and, and uh, hang out some of the General Assembly, see how laws get passed and how we lobby things. Uh, so that's a really good time to be there. Uh, the intern process is pretty much, you know, just contact us by email. Uh, we have actually had a lot of kids contact us over the last year because of COVID. I think there are fewer intern opportunities and we had to actually limit our intern involvement. We had one last year who did it totally virtually and I don't think that was a great way for her to get much experience, but it was the best we could do during that time. So uh, we, we vet somebody pretty hard because we, we have money in the office and we have a lot of personal information in the office. So we've got to have somebody who's very responsible and who cares about the work that we're doing, cares about making Kentucky better. So you know, if you're interested, I love to have good interns. Uh, we've got one right now who's from Eastern Kentucky who uh, um, you know, cares a lot about that region, which is something that I care about. So we're kind of giving her some f things to focus on in that area. Uh, but yeah, we, we always like to have a good intern in the office. So feel free to apply. Just send us an email to the website and, and we'll take a look at you. And I'll tell you, actually, before we get through with that, sometimes we have kids come in shadow. So like maybe you don't have time to do a full internship. Uh, we've occasionally had a kid who'll come for a week in shadow, especially during session. Uh, and we'll arrange for them to maybe page some for a while, depending upon how old they are. And then occasionally we've had a kid who's come just for a day. I had a kid in Fleming County who was, I think he may have only been a sophomore, so he was a young kid. And he was president of the Future Business Leaders of America. He might have also been involved in 4-H because he was a really, really involved kid. And he said, hey, I, I would love to know some more. Can I shadow in the office? So, uh, you know, we took him up on it. And he was one of the first to do a one-day shadow. Um, but yeah, so if you're interested in that too, you know, I, I love to see uh, young people who want to be involved, want to make a difference, and I want to help you do that. You discussed this a little bit earlier, but what is your educational background? Um, what degrees or certifications are needed for your position? Sure. Well, uh, so I have a, a law degree. I have a JD from the University of Kentucky, and that actually is a really useful degree doing the kind of work that I do. You know, you're trained very much on the function of government. You're trained in what uh, I'm going to refer to as first principles a lot of times, you know, what the Constitution is about, uh, things that you're learning in 4-H. Uh, those are great things to know if you're going to serve in government at whatever level. Uh, I I think it's particularly useful in the treasurer's office because one of the things that I do is I always say whatever comes out of my office, whatever is being paid, has to not only be correct, you know, it has to be you know, correct with the invoice, but it has to be in line with the Constitution, in line with law. So there actually have been times that I've stopped payments because they're unconstitutional or uh, they're outside of what's in the statute. So, you know, if you've got a law degree yourself, you don't have to depend on somebody else to tell you what to do, although you can do it with good advisors. You don't have to have a law degree, but I think it's a tremendous asset in the role that I have. Uh, there have been treasurers who've had uh, CPA uh, licensing, and I think, you know, that's a very useful one. Um, if, if you don't have that, you know, bring people on board who have that. That's what I've done. Practicing bankruptcy law, I do have, uh, you know, an interest in solving people's financial issues. Uh, so that's a good fit for, for being treasurer. But, you know, really a lot of it is, is just having a good grounding on the role of government, uh, you know, the founding principles of our country. If you have a good grounding in that, then I think you can be ready to serve in public service. A lot of people have business backgrounds and they're very entrepreneurial. And I love that too. I think that can be a great background. So my undergraduate degree was from Liberty University and uh, I graduated with a psychology degree. <laughs> so a lot of people might think that's an unusual one for the role that I have and it is a bit unusual, but it, a lot of what I do is about people and you know, you start to learn about behaviors and how to help people and uh, so that was a useful background for what I do now. Or some of our 4-H'ers have participated in the scholarship essay contest yes. that your office holds. Um, could you explain that opportunity a little bit more? Will it continue this year? Sure. So we've done it twice, and we're always trying to tweak it and make it better. Uh, we did it once over the summer, and it was the Treasurer's Challenge, and it lasted for about a month. You had to take six weeks online uh, classes on, or, or six classes, you didn't have to do it in six weeks, but six classes uh, on financial literacy, different subjects. And then once you completed that, you had to write an essay uh, talking about, you know, what you had learned. Uh, mostly we were trying to target like investing and saving and things like that. Uh, and then whoever won that got a $5,000 scholarship for a 529. And that's one of the things that my office deals with. Uh, 529 accounts are education savings accounts and you can actually um, pay less taxes on it. You actually don't pay taxes on investment. So it's a great vehicle to be able to use some more money for your education. So you can use it as a high school student if you want to, or an elementary student, uh, but you can also use it when you get to college, you get to vocational school, whatever it is that you're doing, education, uh, that money can go to that. So uh, that's what we did the first time, and I think it was a great success. We had um, 
we had over, I believe it was over 1,500 students that, that did it, which is a lot of kids in the summertime. You know, you're trying to get kids to do schoolwork, basically, in the summertime. Yeah. Um, and we had a kid, oh, you'll, you'll like this, it was a kid from Georgetown who uh, wanted, he did not come from a farming back, background, but he wanted to uh, have a career in agriculture. And he actually signed up for it, did the essay, and won before he even told his parents that he'd done it. We also did a, uh, a, a financial literacy B that was just over spring break. That one lasted two weeks. So depending upon when your spring break was, both of these were geared for mostly high schools, 13 and up. Uh, so that time we actually did three types of uh, awards. We did a $5,000, I think we did a $3,000, and then maybe a $1,500, uh, 529. So it was first, second, third place. Uh, so it went great, and we are trying to modify it to tweak it. We've had some kids that have already done it, so we don't want to do the same classes all over again, uh, the same essay. So we'll be doing it again, but we're going to tweak it so that we, you know, you can do it more than once and learn new things. Uh, so thanks for asking about that. So keep your eyes out. Actually, that's something we push on social media. Mm -hmm. So if you take a look at um, the Treasury social media accounts, you know, we've got them all. Just look for my name and you'll find it. And then, uh, you know, jump in and, and learn some things. I know as college students, we definitely know how beneficial scholarships are. Yes, yes. Absolutely, absolutely. It's expensive. So I want to help you out. <laughs> so what would you like to say to Kentucky 4-Hers about the importance of civic engagement? And kind of what would you like to see them do to improve their civic engagement? Yeah, what a great question. Well, I love 4-H because, you know, you are trained on so many useful things. And I think you're the, exactly the kind of people that we want to have involved in politics, uh, involved in leadership and all sorts of levels, you know, whether you're running a farm, you're running a business, um, you're teaching, whatever it is that you feel like God's called you to do, uh, you're very well trained for that. And I want to encourage you, we need young people like that because you, you really had tremendous training. Not everybody gets training by the time they're your age. Because you've been involved in 4-H, you've had great training. So we need people like you to jump in and be involved. And it's great if it starts early. You know, like I told you, I was the youngest woman in the country to be elected to a statewide office. So I believe in jumping in early. Uh, I wasn't married yet when I ran for office, and I got married after uh, I got elected. Um, so uh, first year in office, I got married, and then of course had my baby um, one year, nine months, and like four days after that. Um, so I really do believe that you don't have to have everything all lined up and figured out in place before you jump in in, in politics or something else. Um, you know, I really, I really do believe in, I'm a very prayerful person, faith is important to me, so I really seek God in every decision that I make. Uh, and I really felt like the time was right for me to run for office, even though I was young. Uh, and the first thing I had ever run for was a statewide office. So uh, I hope that's a good example that, you know, you, if you feel like you've got something you wanna be involved in, some something that you're skilled in that you wanna give back. Uh, women in particular often self-disqualify. The, the men are often ready to go. So, so for the gents, that's great. We want you to uh, jump in and go for it. But for the women, I want to encourage you, don't self-disqualify because you have tremendous things to offer and we need your involvement, particularly if you're a 4-H'er. Like I said, you've been well trained, you're ready to go. So, so jump in, be involved, and be involved young. You know, if you can get involved in someone's campaign, if you can do an internship, um, there's all sorts of volunteer opportunities. Those are great ways to get your foot in the door because people are looking for young people who care uh, you have a tremendous opportunity right now that you're never going to have the rest of your life because people are more willing to help young people. Uh, you're, not, you're not a rival right now. They care about you. You're the future. And they want to give you a leg up. They want to pour into you. They want to mentor you. So take advantage of that right now. It's a great time to do that. We definitely learn in 4-H the importance of youth voice. So yes. we love that you're um, such an advocate for that. Wow. What an awesome interview. I am just, I, I'm just overwhelmed. Thank you, Treasurer Ball, for being here, and uh, thank our officers for being here, and, and just that, that important communication about being involved, being in the moment, being engaged, um, and, and also the, the importance of, of being educated in what you want to do. You know, it doesn't matter, you know, if you choose a, a four-year degree or a Juris Doctorate or, or a certificate program, the important thing is be educated in what you want to do. And, and we appreciate that. We also love the fact that, that you are so um, supportive of, of, of females and, and, and their uh, success, and, uh, and also males as well. And, and, and we also uh, appreciate that you have implemented financial literacy for high schoolers and, and gave that a push because for so long that, that was not um, a priority it seems. And we are just so glad from the 4-H department 
we have been doing that for years, and so we are just glad uh, that at your level that that has been done as well. We want to thank you for joining us. We want you to get involved in your communities. Become engaged. Don't just sit there and wait for other people to do it. We also want to thank uh, Catherine North, who is our communications director for Treasurer Ball's office for, for working with us uh, to get today uh, uh, completed. We appreciate our Ag Communications Services for being here and filming. And we appreciate our Kentucky 4-H Youth Development Department for sponsoring this series of videos. My name is Chuck Stamper. I'm Extension Specialist for the Kentucky 4-H Youth Development Department. If you have any questions, please feel free to contact me. Thank you for joining us. Thank you again, Treasurer Ball. Thank you.